What's going on boys? I'm the Dual Factory and in today's video I'm going to be showing you my Mech Knight Invoke Deck profile. I've been wanting to show you this guy, this list for a while but kind of on the back burner because I didn't want to show the list because I thought I was going to take it to an event. I ended up not taking it so now I feel like it's a good time to showcase you because I feel like it's a really good time to play Rogue and this is a really good Rogue strategy. But before I get into the profile I just want to let you guys know if you haven't already please go check out the X2 Drop podcast. Me and Bingo HD also known as John we put it up every Monday. Um, it's actually starting to pick up a lot of traction and we're just trying to make a really big push here where we can actually get it out and let people to, and, let, and we just want people to hear it and give them a chance to kind of follow it because it's something we enjoy to do. We want it to get bigger and bigger every week so if you haven't checked it out Links in the description below. Um, don't forget to check that out. But enough about that. Let's go ahead and get to the deck profile. I'm going to show you my Mech Knight Invoke list. As many of you know, since Fusion and Force is invoked as a archetype that is, or engine I should say, that I've really enjoyed playing, and I actually enjoy playing it more than most of the engines in Yu-Gi-Oh! Just because I really like the idea of Alistair fusing for a boss monster every single turn. However, the plethora of hand traps that we now have access to, and as well as its worst matchup being Thunder, still being very and highly meta relevant, it makes it really hard to play this deck. Now, you do get some new tools to play with it, such as Fantastical Dragon Phantasma, which isn't really that new at this point, but something the deck never had before. And you also have cards like Nibiru, the Primal Being that just released, that actually makes going second really, really potent in this type of deck, but I don't think it's a card that you should main deck. Um, however, to keep that in mind, because it is a light monster, so it works really well with making Mechaba. But after that, let's go ahead and get into the list. Uh, you play three copies of Alistair the Invoker. There's not much to say about this. It's one of those decks that the, the best thing it has going for is one card engine, and you want to be able to see Alistair as soon as possible. Now, the loss of terraforming going to two actually did, really did hurt this deck's consistency, and one of the reasons why I decided not to play an event, but... You still have three copies of this, three Meltdown, and the one copy of Terraforming, so it's like playing seven copies of Alistair in your deck, so you still have plenty of access to it whenever you do need it. Um, in terms of the Mech Knights, three Purple Nightfall, he is the best one for those of you who don't know what he does. He's essentially a Wind-Up Rabbit and Wind-Up Factory in one card. Um, on to the other Mech Knights, we play two copies of Blue Sky. He's really, on it. he's the, you'll get more advantage out of this one than any of the other ones. But because he requires your opponent to have cards in the comps that actually plus, we only play two. And it's just one of those that you want to search off Purple Nightfall and then you want to summon it to search the other Purple Nightfall after so on and so forth and keep your loops going. Um, and then we play one Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse. You only ever need one. I've never, there's never been a situation where I've wanted two and there's never been a situation where I wanted any of the others. Like people experiment with Red Moon all the time and I experimented with Red Moon and then Yellow Star, but they're just super lackluster. So these six Mech Knights I think are the perfect ratio. And then for hand traps in the deck, I play three copies of Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. Uh, as many of you know, and for those of you who might not know, Mech Knight Invoked is dedicated going second strategy just because the Mech Knights are better going second, and this deck is also better at breaking boards than it is trying to establish them. So, in a dedicated going second matchup, or not matched up, but dedicated going second strategy, I think Fantastical Dragon Phantasme is the perfect uh, in for a deck like this. Also, one of its worst matchups being uh, Sky Striker. Because Widow Anchor is a really hard card because you really want your Alistair to resolve. And you have other ways to make it resolve, such as forcing your opponent to deal with your Mech Knight cards or forcing them to deal with your Power Spells. But this just guarantees another layer of protection for your card to resolve. Plus, there's a lot of cards in the deck like you'll clump up really bad and this just lets you cycle through those bad hands. So, I think it's a really good card. I think it's a really good hand trap for this particular strategy. And then, continuing the theme of hand traps, we play three copies of Effect Veiler. One of the big problems with the deck, and you'll see in a lot of strategies, is you get hampered by hard once per turn effects. And one of the cool things about the Mech Knight Voked In strategy is not a lot of the cards are hard once per turn effects, and I like to keep that th theme the same with the hand traps. Uh, Valor is the most... I don't I'm, I don't want to say generic, because Ash Blossom is the most generic, but it's one of the hand traps that's good across the board against almost every single deck, and it's a light attribute. So that's why I feel like it really makes the cut in this deck and where it really shines... Arguably, you could play Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit in the slot as well because it is a light monster. That being said, game one overall versatility, I just think Valor is better. So we main deck that. I would side Ogre if I like if I were to take this deck to an event. But for the main deck, I think Valor is a better fit. And then I was playing two copies of Ash Blossom. After playing the format more, now that's more developed, I would probably go on a limb here and say I would probably bump this hand trap up to three. 
It also gives you more access to Brigatrio, and Ash Blossom Enjoy Springs is the most generic hand trap that you can play in the format currently. So, enough about that. So that's it for the monsters and the hand traps. Uh, we do play three infinite permits, but you'll see that at the end of the profile. For spells, we play three copies of Magical Meltdown. You want to max out on your copies of Alistair, and that's why we play three copies of this. Also, this card's really insane, especially with cards like Instant Fusion, Invocation. Uh, for some reason, if you're experimenting with the Invoke Shadal version of this, uh, it's really cool with Shadal Fusion because you can't stop it, but that's we don't play that. However, just those applications, and also your opponent not being able to respond to fusion monsters at the after a successful fusion summon is really cool. Like, for example, I was playing Raijin, and a lot of people, even though this has been out for a while, a lot of people don't know, when you summon Raijin off of Instant Fusion with me Magical Meltdown face-up, and you activate the effect, your opponent can't respond to it because of Magical Meltdown being face-up, and that just that's just insane. And going on with the theme of playing more copies of Alistair, we also play the one Terraforming. This going one actually hurt a lot more than a lot of people think. Uh, we felt it at 2, and now we definitely feel it at 1. So, that being said, one of the reasons why I also decided not to play the deck at any event lately is just because you... I could go over the math, math and statistics of only being able to play uh, one terraforming, but we'll just not get it. Just know, you have 7 copies of Alistair. I play 3 copies of the Fusion Spell Invocation. Usually I'm a big advocate of playing 2. Uh, a lot of the videos you'll hear that I've been playing 2, but... I feel like playing 3 is really, really necessary, especially now. Uh, a lot of the times, if your Alistair gets stopped, you just want to hard draw this card, and you can still keep your engine going. Also, we are playing Desires, so the likelihood of ban it. I'm not saying the likelihood of banishing all 3 copies is huge, but when you play 2, you're more likely to banish 2 off of Desires than you would 3 copies, and then so on and so forth. Just It's just good to play 3, that's all you need to know. One copy of Book of the Law, you play it because you can search it off Alistair the Meltdown Invoker and kill your opponent. Um, the, the biggest reason, and the best reason to play this deck, I personally think, is one of the decks that best suited to play three copies of Super Poly. And the reasoning behind that is because Alistair plus any monster on the field of any type of attribute, this card can work with. So, that being said, I just lost my turn of thought. But that being said, Super Poly just has a natural home in this deck, especially in a going second, because this card's really, really, really good going second, because it helps you break boards. And you have a plethora of fusion monsters you can make. The ones I'm playing right now are Mechaba, Purgatrio, and Megalancia. You play the Megalancia for the OTK. But with Mechaba being a light and Purgatrio being fire, those attributes are really popular right now. You can take Titans to make Mechaba. You could take Salamon Great, Sunlit Wolves, Heat Leos, and all that to make Purgatrios so on and so forth, and then your extra decks are actually kind of flexible on what you can play, so you can play other really cool Super Poly targets that just ensure your players are able to go through, but I think this deck is about one of the best ones to play Super Poly, so that's why I think it's a really, like, it is a definite three of in this deck. Um, John over Bingo HD completely thought different, but I think if you're going to play this, you should definitely main deck it. Three copies of Instant Fusion. I just think this card's really solid right now, especially being able to use 1000 other Shakes going second. You can also summon Mud Dragon off of it. I was playing Raijin, but I cut it, but this card's insane. Uh, we're still playing three copies of Cosmic Cyclone. I think in this particular strategy, it's better than Twin Twister, and I think it's better than MST currently for this type of deck. And some people don't agree with that, but I think it's, I think it's just really potent. Especially with only one multi-roll rolling around. If you deal with one multi-roll, then your opponent's Sky Striker doesn't really have a really good grind out to get to you, and then that's where you start taking over. And then the final spell in the main deck is you'll see three copies of Pot of Desires. Unfortunately, they're not ulti yet, but the idea is you want to see your cards... As, you, want to, you want the plus ones in your deck. Uh, having se seven cards going second is insane, and you just want a more likely chance of seeing Alistair in your opening hands, and this card facilitates that. Uh... That's also one of the reasons why you're going to see three copies of Invocation and stuff like that in your main deck. Because when you play this card, you have to kind of change your deck building to more two, two ofs and three ofs in your deck. Versus, like, I only want to play one copy of this card, yada, yada, yada. But you already know what Pot of Desires is at this point. It's a solid plus one. And the, like I said, the last hand trap you play in the deck is three copies of Infinite Impermanence. It's... the card's insane. But that is my main deck. It is 40. We'll move on to the extra deck. Like I was saying earlier, we'll start with the Invoked Fusion, so two copies of Megaba. Uh, it's Solemn Judgment in a in a card on legs. There's not much to say about it. It's a I think it's the best generic fusion, especially um now, especially now when you're playing against 
what's the deck? Thunder Pure Thunder Dragons has a surgeon back in the format where you can take their Titans, which Titans actually really hard to play around. Colossus is hard to play around, arguably as well. But Titan makes it really, really hard, and being able to take Titan and just put this on the field makes it just, it's really good for you. Two copies of Purgatrio. Uh, I was playing one at first, but two definitely comes up, and you 100% you need the second one in a lot of situations. Especially with uh, Ash being the most generic hand trap, and there's still a lot of Salomon great players you're, you're going to need to. Uh, Megalancia, you're literally only playing this because of the Book of the Law. There are some situations where it will come up that you can super poly for, but those are few and far between. But if you want to kill your opponent, you need to play this card. And then for two generic... Or not... Yeah, I guess you could say generic. But for two super poly targets, we're playing one copy of Mud Dragon and one copy of Starving Vending Fusion Dragon. Uh, note, this can be summoned off of Instant Fusion and actually makes your Alistair safe because you can use its effect to change it to Dark Attribute and then your opponent, I believe it's you can't target the same attribute on the cards. Yeah, your opponent can't target monsters on the field with the same attribute. So you can make it a Dark Attribute, summon Alistair, and your Alistair is Impermanence Proof and it's also Veil Proof. It's not Ash Proof, but more or less taking away multiple hand traps is better than being not being immune to any of them and then starting on fusion dragon and i think it's one of the better generic ones especially for combo decks like orcus uh the danger thunder deck that's still being played you it's okay against pure thunder because you can take their two colossus but you still have to deal with titan but more or less you're just looking for the best value out of your super poly and these just get the most mileage one copy of thousands i restrict for instant fusion cards insane going seconds for generic link monsters, we are playing Alistair, the Invoker of Madness. Card's insane. If you summon this and it successfully resolve the effect, you should be killing your opponent every single time. Uh, for generic link ones, we are playing the one copy of Link Karibo for Instant Fusion Thousands I Restrict. Uh, it is very important to play that. And then a card that gives us like a whole new life is Salomon Great Almirage. Uh, you guys probably know what it does by now, but all it requires is a mo one normal summon monster with 1,000 or less attack, and Alistair remits that requirement. And that this card becomes a one-card combo because you can normal summon Alistair, link, uh, add invocation, add Almirage, set the invocation, and then you now have a one-card column to summon any of your Mech Knights, and it actually makes going first not terrible in this deck. Also, a cool combo with Solomon Great Almirage, which I don't see a lot of people playing. Uh, arguably, you don't have to play it, and you can just cut it for, like, a Violet Chimera or something like that to make your super more important. But I think it's important enough that you play the one copy of Secure Gardener. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it takes one Cyber's Link monster to make it, which Solomon Great Almirage beats the requirements. But now, because we have Almirage in the extra deck, and you can play Secure Gardener, it now makes your Alistair a one-card Mechaba, and a lot of people don't realize how powerful that effect is. You can also... Uh, Mechaba backed by trap cards is insane, so you uh, you side like cards like Sanctum, Crackdown, and all this other fun stuff they can do, so those backed by Mechaba is insane, and this card allows you to facilitate that play. Uh, one copy of Lambda, it's the best generic link to, other than Alistair the Meltdown Invoker, because sometimes you can't make him, but you can make the Lambda, and you need to, it's also light, and it also makes Sight and Gamma really potent too. And then the last two cards I play in my extra deck is one copy of Nightmare Unicorn, and one card copy of Nightmare Phoenix. They're just generic Link monsters that are really, really good right now. And that was my Mech Knight Invoke deck profile, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Like I said earlier in the video, if you haven't checked out the X2 Drop podcast, don't forget to check that out. In upcoming videos, I wanted to get this. This is the last uh, back burner deck that I had before I profile, because I'm going to profile Fire Fist, I'm going to profile Marine Says Frogs, I'm going to profile, I'm going to try to profile Pure Thunder, because I actually really want to, and Combo Thunder, like, there's a bunch of stuff, I'm just trying to bring you guys more content, because the channel has been kind of sliding downhill, and I kind of want to bring it back up, but don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, we'll catch you guys in the next video, see you guys later, peace.